They really need a better slogan though. Icon Reborn. All right, I get it. Blackberry is old. They still make Blackberries? Get all the jokes out of your system. Go ahead, pause the video. We feeling better? Looking at my stats from phones I reviewed in 2018, the Key 2 video I produced is one of my more trafficked videos in 2019. And later comments lean heavy on an audience looking for a top tier communication device. We haven't gotten any word on a replacement like a Key 3, but we did get this sexy refresh in red which is pretty much the same phone as before with the new coat of paint and double the storage. Not a terrible strategy for a TikTok release as this limited edition sold out fast and is now going for ridiculously high prices online. I don't think I'd buy this phone at that price, but I'm not gonna tell you how to spend your cash. You do you. My opinion from my original review, has not changed a lot. And using this phone again, the mid-ranger chipset has aged much better than I thought it would. The 660 in the Key 2 doesn't really slow you down as much as reviewers were gnashing their teeth over. BlackBerry is making a very specific argument with security. So the focus is not on extracting the same UI performance that Google is milking out of the Pixel 3a. Perfectly at home with messaging, opening documents, and the additional RAM bump over other mid-ranger hardware, facilitates that kind of use. I do have a few gripes returning to this handset. One thing 2019 should be remembered for, how much more seriously manufacturers are taking the feel of a phone. Hardware like speakers and haptics, even modestly priced phones today, prioritizing nicer interactions. The Key 2 felt fine in 2018, but hasn't really kept up against newer handsets and now feels weedy by comparison. The haptic motor on this phone, Pretty floppy. And speaker on the bottom, totally practical. Loud enough for alerts, notifications, ringtones, not as nice as other entertainment options of this year. And it's always worth commenting on the camera. And it's okay. I really don't think the camera is as bad as people have been making it out to be. I shot a full camera deep dive and it really doesn't hold you back much. If there's anything to be critical about, the Key 2 feels like a downgrade in low light from the Key 1. If you're the target demo for a communicator phone like the Key 2, and you're interested in what makes this phone special, what this phone does well, I wouldn't let the mid-pack camera scare you off. It's really not that bad. Getting back to the software, it's a complicated situation. The Key 2 is still on Android 8.1 with a current security patch. That's a bummer for Android enthusiasts, but this is a BlackBerry first and foremost. You really get the sense that TCL is using Android as a base, but the main goal is to carve up the Android OS, still have access to the wealth of apps on the platform, but make a device that satisfies the old school notion of BlackBerry corporate security. The benefit is a buttoned up version of Android, verified security components, I don't think this kernel has ever been cracked or rooted, and you can't even roll the software back to an older build. Your general gadget enthusiasts commenting on YouTube will only see the downsides to that, but we shouldn't ignore there is a purpose behind it. What I'm less impressed by, I don't personally like custom panels and alternate UI elements that sap performance. Those ideas of docks and hubs and sliders are very BlackBerry, but this phone moves more consistently. It's a little faster when I drop all that extra stuff and use Nova Launcher. So many features on this phone are carved out and are updated individually when we look at Google Play. So I also wouldn't be concerned about not always getting every single month security patch from Google because this phone is already pretty well ahead of the curve and they're only rolling in security patches when they think that there's a concern for this phone specifically. Then for all of that daily maintenance -y stuff, you're going to see the BlackBerry services updated individually in the Google Play Store. Thankfully, what makes this phone unique is not just a collection of apps or a clumsy launcher. I mean, it's looking you right in the face as soon as you pick the phone up. I love coming back to a hardware keyboard. I love the ability to customize and program a ton of shortcuts. I am more accurate typing longer messages on hardware. And I really like having a scroll wheel for websites and apps you know, sliding on these capacitive keys. It's always hard to quantify the cost of a phone and what one feature might do to affect that price, but this is so wonderfully incorporated into the whole of the phone and the operating system, it makes a very strong argument for this device having a higher price tag. This is not just some clumsy clip-on keyboard. You cannot recreate this experience 
with some plasticky accessory. And always worth reiterating, I love the overall build. I love it. Genuinely, one of the only new phones recently released that I will happily take out of the house without a case on. Like going back to a Galaxy Note 4. It's a phone made for grown-ups, metal trim, grippy back, recalling that old school sensibility of what corporate grade business devices, IBM ThinkPads used to feel like. But that's enough rambling from me. We just wanted a quick revisit. Where does that leave us with the key to 2019? The heavy question, would I recommend someone buy one today? The audience for this phone is niche but I don't think the value proposition has degraded much over one year. A computer is more than just a processor or a screen. And in phone land, we're starting to take mid-range chipsets more seriously. If we're not catering to the prettiest multimedia experience, then it makes sense to balance compute power against longer battery life, something that has aged terrifically on my key too. This phone has carved out a special little nook outside the Android performance rat race. I wouldn't discount the smaller audience of folks who enjoy the tactile experience of this keyboard, and those who want a BlackBerry certified approach to security. If there's a bummer for me, I doubt this phone will get Android Q. And I would have loved to see if this handset could power a reasonable desktop mode since it does have support for HDMI output. There's still a need. There's still a market for phones outside the all screen, all glass zeitgeist of popular handsets. If all you wanna do is compare the chipset and display some benchmarks, then yes, the BlackBerry loses pretty much every performance and multimedia fight you can host near this price. But that also means you have to ignore what the phone actually brings to the table and how insanely unique this solution is. Now for all that being said, I really do hope we hear some news on a BlackBerry Key 3 soon. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to this channel. More than just geeking out on the shiniest, most popular tech in YouTube search, we really want to take a look at all of our options and make sure we're getting the exact right fit gadget for you. If you'd like to help support the production of those conversations, there are links uh, to hit that you can click on in the description below, or you could consider joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen right now. A growing community of fun, like-minded tech pals, and a huge resource for me crafting future videos and reviews and editorials. I hope you'll check it out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Instagrams and the Facebooks and the Twitches, and I will catch you all on the next review.